So good morning, everybody. And today we are talking about analyzing and synthesizing. That is basically the next step after the need finding phase for us. So this will be material that you will find useful for assignment two. Partially to do some work on assignment one, uh, but mostly, but in a, let's say, uh, informal way, is not something that we ask you during the assignment. So some of these could be useful to keep in mind, but most of these will be actually things to be used for assignment two hmm, that will, will start in two weeks. Um, one thing I want, I want to say to, to all the groups before starting this very, very quickly is um, that, as I probably mentioned already, it's, it's normal, uh, it's not right, but it's normal that um, you focus still much on solutions, finding apps, etc. And this is the single biggest difficulties that students face in this course, at this part of the, of the course, big, at, at least. So, but try to just not focus on the solution. Try to focus on really what you want to explore, what you want to see, what you want to ask about practices, processes, behaviors, things that happen in the reality with your immediate user for assignment one. Solution will come. I'm pretty sure that you are good in problem solving and finding solution and creating apps and ideating apps. Um, we want you to focus to change this perspective of what you are used to and focus more on problem framing that is as important as problem solving but not um, so frequently met in Polytechnico so far but could be valuable, very, very valuable when you want to start something. And um, so don't focus on solution because if you again focus on solution your interviews your needs your brainstorming will follow the direction of the solution you have in mind and in most of the case will be weak will be visible in a visible way will be thin the brainstorming the solution part because you started with an idea in mind and you are following that idea hmm? for a solution for an app for so don't do that as much as possible. Okay, and with that, analyzing and synthesizing. So let's start with uh, uh, our usual game, but with the user need uh, edition. So I'm going to show you some user needs written in this course two years ago. Mm? So not last year, two years ago. And you will need to tell me if it's a good user need or not. This is, uh, let's say, a recognition exercise that could be also, of course, useful when you have to do uh, the end of assignment one and you need to write user needs. So if you can recognize if a user need is as a need or not, you will also be able to, um, to, to do some, a better job, per, hopefully, for your own user need. Uh, just a general assumption, we are missing the general context here. It's just one sentence so as a user need. We don't know what's going on, which was the domain, which was the immediate user. We are lacking of some of this information. So some of these user needs may or may not be needs, depending on the actual context. I will try to remember it, but it's two years ago, so I will try. Uh, so let's start with the first one that is easy. Is this a need or not? Louder. No. Why is not a need? Yes, why it's a solution? <laughs> because it's a noun and it's an object in a way, and it's an animal in this case. Second one, user needs to have financial help. It's a good need, or it's a bad need, or not a need at all? Who said it is a good need? 
one person who said it is a bad need for pe five people who said it is not a need one person okay and there is always this huge purgatory um, okay so uh, why is a bad need can be explained differently meaning uh, uh, why is a good uh, need helping others in finance is a good thing um, yeah, but that is a good characterization of the domain, right? So the domain is financial help. So the domain is good. This uh, as a need is not such a good need for the reason that he was saying. It could be more specific. What do you mean need to have financial help? It, exactly. What was the things you, these people observed in need finding or interview about in need finding to specify financial help? Is financial help the solution? I mean, the not the solution the the actual need so in this case and this is the context where where it's important in this case was not uh the domain was i i, I think to remember uh about um medical training hmm? where the actual need so where what they observed with the interview was that people they didn't have enough material to train on and so the need was, well, they need more money. They need financial help to buy things. And that could be a need, but it's a bad with as a weak need. Because the actual need in that case was they need more, they need to practice more. That was the need. And the solution to practice more was, well, buying more stuff or creating an application in virtual reality to simulate the training or, but these are all solutions. So this is framed as a need, but in that domain, that is the beware that is there, we are missing general context, that was not a great need because there was a deeper need that was user need to train more, to train more frequently, to train better in the context. And the financial help was something that would help them to train more and to train uh, better because more material. Hmm? So always try to do a step farther down I say okay is this the need or there is something we have interviewed seen observed listened for that is actually more specific more deep and in this case was more material the thing that were the people say we want more material we need more material but actually more material after talking with the group was well it's not the material per se is that they need to train more and the absence of material would not allow them to train more so the need was train more hmm? uh, so financial help is is one solution phrased as a need this one we already met this one so this should be easy is a need or not yes okay this one user needs to have more more tools To move faster. Well, it depends on the context. So, if the context is about communication, that's maybe it's not about moving. Uh, if it's about talking, and so that could be a, a weak need, of course. But if we move like uh, moving, like the need of moving, that it's uh, counter the, the opposite of the first one, hmm, in a way. So. User needs to have more tools. Is that a need or not? No. Because tools are, well, because it's vague, more tools to do what? Mm -hmm. And tools are a solution. But it's framed, it's phrased again as a need. 
because we said a need is a verb and to have is a verb but actually in this case is fr is phrased as a as a need but actually is not this is is a solution tools and it's unspecific more tools to do what why you need more tools and again like financial help maybe you need more not more tools but you need more practice with the tools or more availability or more time or something else is this a need or not the user needs to practice more with the appropriate tools who say yes who say no why no why not someone it could be vague you well that is the beware written over there yes it may depend on the context if you don't know the context it may be a good need or a bad need it's just bad need so but it's a need it's bad need maybe it's a bad need and why you say yes Yes, if we use the same, of course, there's this big beware here uh, for the general context. In some contexts, it could be a bad need. In other contexts, actually, it's a good need, but it's still a need. It could be specified more in some way. But this, for instance, is the need that was behind the financial help. Mm -hmm. So they needed to, in the medical setting, they needed to practice more, but not to practice more generally, with random stuff, they really s highlighted the need to practice more with the appropriate tools, like the medical certified tools, not with just random stuff. Mm? So they, the group wanted to, since this was emerged from the interviews, they wanted to, the, the groups wanted just to say, need to practice more in general, but want to, to stress that this additional practice should happen with the appropriate tools. Mm. Uh, but in that context, it makes sense. In, a general, in another context would be, as he was saying, to general, especially the appropriate tool part. Mm. So it could be refined. Last one. Users need to be able to run faster. Is a need or not, first of all, and then we can see if it's a good or bad need, but if uh, it's a need or not. Who say no? Three. Who say that is a need, bad or, or good, doesn't matter. Okay, it's slightly more. Um, why is not a need? Because why do they need to run? Maybe they can do it faster. Mm. Okay, and why yes? So why they do need to run and not do another way? Uh, why they say yes? Because it is a need to maybe uh bad you need to run. <coughs> maybe it's the goal and not the uh, so it's a need. Mm. And he was saying because it's it's, it looks like a need maybe it's not a great need but still a need because it could be something that this is uh this is here and it's particularly tricky uh, again the beware there is, is important um uh this is a need so i would say that is a need maybe it's not a good need but it's a need uh it's phrase also is a need like as a verb a uh, run is a need the run is a verb so everything is a need it's not like having something material but is a uh, condition running as an action uh, in this case was i think um, a, a medium good need um, because the domain was running so they were doing something for runners 
uh, competing, and so they actually need to, to run faster. So it was not a bad need under that perspective, but in general could be also a bad need. Uh, actually, in this case also, similarly to the financial help, the deeper need is, is probably something different because the question is why you need to run faster. Um, and because I want to win a competition, because I want to train more, because I want to improve my physical condition, etc. And in asking why in going deep, there could be other more meaningful needs that emerge. In this case, I think that they will stop here with the run faster, because actually why they want to run faster to improve, and that's and how they improve, they run faster. And so it was like a, a closed loop in that specific case. But in other case, it could be uh, do you want to run faster? Why to improve? So which are the options to improve? Running faster or doing a more diversified set of training? And so that, that becomes more close to a solution. Uh, running faster, diversifying trainings, etc. And the needs was more related to improve the physical uh, condition to win the next marathon, to, to do something else. Mm? So. Uh, and, and we, are, we stop here. So pay attention. Uh, so of course the context is, is important. So always, well, you know the context you are inserted. It is your domain and your immediate user. And so the needs make sense in a context and may make less sense in another. Uh, but most importantly, try to, when you see a need, when you define a need, say, okay, there is something deeper behind them. There is something specific, or we are just saying financial help. Uh, more tools or there is some nuances that actually move from a possible solution financial help to um, a specific need behind mm? in your specific domain so a need for a group a could be a good need for group a could be a terrible need for group b because maybe in that sense is a, a good a good constraint uh, so, for instance, uh, financial help, while it's, it's, it could be phrased better as a need, if we are talking about a financial domain that could be specified but will not change drastically, maybe. Okay? So, they don't, the context is still fundamentally important, but this exercise was to show you that something that may or may not be a need uh, even if they're phrased like a need, like have financial help, where have, have is, is a verb, of course, is actually something that in your domain can be explored more and you go, should go deeper, connect with the results of the interview, the observation, the artifacts, the things you did and you have seen to say, okay, this is actually what they need or this is what, actually what they want, like more money to buy stuff. But why they want to, to again, the financial help? Why they want to buy more stuff? Because they need to train more. And why they need to train more? Because they don't have enough practice. And so the need is actually training more to get more practice. Mm? That is the investigation you do after the surface. Mm? So when formulating the need, especially the deep need, try to go behind the surface and link them strongly with the interviews and the results of the thing or the finding that you have done. Because that will inform a better need than a superficial uh, outlook on that. Okay, so any last comments on this? Otherwise we will proceed with the lecture. Lecture. Um, so moving in our design process, we are moved to the analysis. Uh, in this case, it's just one step before the design that will be the first uh, prototype for us. Uh, so the goal, is to uh, create design goals, making user needs explicit. So we def identify user needs, but we want to move from a need to a solution and to then a prototype. And we want also to represent, in a way, the results of the analysis and the design goals. So this is made up of two parts. One is about tasks. We already covered briefly tasks uh, in lesson number two. And the second part is about storyboard as a way of synthesizing. So this is more about analysis and the second part is about synthesizing. And we will ask you tasks for your solution in assignment two, and we will ask you a storyboard in assignment two. So both this part will be part of assignment two, and we will 
meet task again at the end of the course for usability testing. That would be a different kind of task. And then there are tasks that you can observe or talk about during the interview that can help better structure your results in this way, mm, in this phase. So what is a task? Uh, we already made an example of tasks. Uh, again, lesson number two. And a task is defined as structured set of activities or high level action required to achieve a user goal. Mm? So a task say what a person wants to do, not how. To do that hmm? describing a complete goal so a task exists in relation with a goal in a similar way that the user needs really existing in a relationship to a context task exists when they are inserted in a goal hmm? so some task makes sense in a goal some other task doesn't really make sense a goal and tasks describe what to do to reach that goal not how to do things but what to do hmm? so to use the example we, we mentioned in um, the second class, the goal for a student could be to get a degree. And getting a degree means that the sub-goal is to pass all the exam. And as a sub-goal is to pass this exam, this course. Mm -hmm. So the immediate goal is passing the HCA course. How, what, what they can do to pass the, goal, the course? Well, I need to work on the project and do a good job. And I need to uh, pass the exam. Hmm? So the task for passing the exam could be booking for the exam, then going to the room for the presentation, then do the presentation, and then go out, answer the questions, and then leave the room. So that is what is needed, get the score and leave the room. This is what is needed to pass the, hmm? what to do. To pass the exam it doesn't say how you walk in the room how you book the uh, exam how you do the presentation these are not uh, at a certain level task is more the steps to complete the task hmm? so often given a domain you have a mix of tasks with different complexity so you have some simple tasks typically the common task the introductory task etc and then on the other side you have the complex task the tasks that are infrequent, the tasks that are for power or extreme users. And then in the middle, you can have what we can call moderate tasks. So something that's not really common, but it's not even something that is for infrequent. And so something in the middle that could start to be less frequent, but it's still pretty common, etc. Um, and, and these are tasks. And again, tasks could be also by of different level that could be uh, as a task to go to the class that's the task they can have or they can have the the task of um, co again uh, completing my degree that is a bigger and this is more a goal actually uh, and, and there are many tasks in that so it could be a uh, different level of task as well so simple task could be uh, imagining uh, um, um, I don't know Imagine this room uh, with the goal of arriving well at the end of the, of the lecture, uh, a simple task could be taking notes or listening and pay attention, for instance. These are tasks. It doesn't say how you do that, but it, it says what to do. Uh, a complex task could be, well, a moderate task could be ask a pertinent question. That is something that is not so common, but still... Um, uh, could be a, a task for you. Ask a appropriate question in the right moment during the class. Uh, that could be a moderate task, right? It doesn't say again how to do that. You raise your hand, you write on Telegram, you whatever, you speak, you gesture, you whatever. It doesn't say how you do that, but still, uh, um, it say what to do. Ask a question. And then the complex task could be something more infrequent, like what uh, I don't know, handling, uh, well, that's for, probably for me, uh, what happens if one person uh, is, is sick and doesn't feel well? That's not something like a task, uh, help the person that is not feeling well. 
Um, so this is maybe a task for a teacher or for uh, an ambulance, etc. So this is infrequent, hopefully. Um, so this is not something that happens every time. So that could be a complex task hmm, in this sense, in this simple domain we made up. So task analysis is actually, there are several techniques that we are not going to see them in detail, but task analysis is the study of the way people perform their task. Hmm? So analyzing task with the aim to determine what they do to complete the task, so the steps to complete the task, and what things they use that are the artifacts that we mentioned already for need finding and how well they succeed in completing the task mm. so the step to complete to do the task raise the hand to to ask a question for instance and what thing they use the end the voice the artifacts and how well they succeed so if the goal was uh set asking a proper question then how well the question is properly asked at the right moment, etc., hmm? and which were the pain points. Of course, this is a very simple example. In more complex tasks, these could be more varied, and artifacts will also be uh, practical artifacts like physical artifacts. So let's make us an example with, with a, a simple task that is clean the house. That's my task. Clean up the house. So which are the steps to clean up the house? Hmm? So this let's say the step number one is get the vacuum cleaner out. Uh, step number two is to fix the appropriate attachment to the vacuum cleaner. Step number three is clean the rooms. Step number four, say when the dust bag gets full, empty it. And step number six is put the vacuum cleaner and tools away because you completed the cleaning. So these are the steps. It doesn't say how well you clean up, uh, but it say how you do things. Uh, and then it, they mention some artifacts, with the vacuum cleaner, the attachment, the dust bags, the rooms are artifacts that you are involved in the analysis of the task, the cupboards, etc. And then there is also the goals that is in the next slide. But let's look at, this, at the steps. Is there anything missing in the steps if we want to do a detailed step-by-step -step instruction is there anything missing or something that could be specified more yes the fixing of attachment well fixing attachment is putting things which attachment okay yeah could be specified the appropriate which are the appropriate Something more evident. Sorry? Uh, yes, move from a room from another. So there is this clean the room. There is this clean the room. That actually is quite big as a step. Clean the rooms. And then so it's clean the first room and then move to another room and then clean another one. So it's like a, a loop. Mm? And what means clean the room. Mm? And then, so this is something that one can be expand as a task. Empty the bag, the bag uh, seems. Uh, yes, it is more detailed steps like open it, taking it out, but Yes, it's not the same level of cleaning the room, that is way more general. Uh, so each of these probably can be specified a subset. Also get the vacuum cleaner out, is open the, uh, the, the place where the vacuum cleaner is and then get it out. So there is always possible to find out additional smaller steps. Uh, but there is one thing that I think is missing here. Turning on, Turning on is actually Right, get the vacuum cleaner, put the things, clean the rooms without turning on and without giving power if there is, a battery, if there is not a battery. Mm? So get the vacuum cleaner out, uh, fix the attachment, plug the, the, um, the, the, the vacuum cleaner to the outlet and turn it on and then clean because without turning on you cannot clean. Mm? So this could be seen as expansion of clean the rooms, like the first step to clean the room is actually turning on and giving power. Uh, so it could be 
still in the uh, expansion of clean the rooms so steps could be done similarly to task at different level it could be more specific less specific it's up to you and your interest and your context to understand whether you want to be really really specific like you want to uh, train a robot to clean up a humanoid robot to clean up and then you need to be extremely specific in what to do including turning on and you're going to say clean the rooms because it's a too high level description if it's for for understanding how people use the vacuum cleaner then this step description could be fine because the usage of vacuum cleaner uh, at the beginning at the end of the, of the usage could be pro more or less fine this way with this big uh, uh, black box that is clean the rooms but if you're interested in before and after the steps cover enough of this hmm? uh, these steps and the artifact doesn't say how well we clean up the, the house and that is the goal hmm? and the goal if you don't have a goal so if you have just a task clean up the room and you don't have a goal in mind that is where your perspective your point of views came in and you can have a different level of goals if you start from a task and go to the goal so it could be the narrow goal like i'm cleaning up the house to well to removing dust that's the most immediate goal low level goal it's dirty i'm clean up uh, and then there is medium goals that is well i want to tidy up the house after a party so it's not normal cleaning is there is a mess around we had a party in the house and we need to clean up hmm? so same task different goal and hosting people for dinner so i'm clean up before dinner so that when hosts arrive everything is clean up this is a medium goal hmm? and of course the medium goal includes the narrow goal that is of removing dust hmm? and then you can also imagine a wide goal that is having a satisfying evening which includes cleaning the house because you had a party you had a dinner etc so this is where again the context can kick in and the goals kick in so this task to clean an house is a valid task for all these goals but it's your perspective the things you have to do the things you are going to observe the things you are talking with people about the things you're going to create that will determine how well that task is completed and how much time you need to put in the task and how important is that task in that moment because for removing dust maybe a quick clean is enough for tidying up the house after the party maybe you need a more significant uh, clean up because it was a party so there is stuff around etc so it will be uh, more uh, more significant again clean up the house and so same task different meaning according to the goal that you have so if you have a goal first it's easier to imagine task but if you start with a task and you want to validate it against the goal then uh, you should figure out which is the best goal you can you can have or the get the goal you want to have in that in the context and according to the goal you can say how well the task fulfills the goal so removing task you will go in if you want to see how well i clean up you will go to see if there is dust left that is a very tiny thing to do if you are tidying up after a party that will be more evident how well you clean up because there will be not just small dust to see but there will be more things around the house the rooms to to tidy up and to reorder hmm? to clean up hmm? so that also depends on the goal and again on the context um, and observing and analyzing tasks in their goals will allow you to understand which are the pain points pain points also for interviews and observation are important because they could be um, motivation for improvement motivation for a new interface motivation for a new system motivation for change so if you notice that emptying the dust bag is a pain point something that people is not really happy to do that a narrow version of the pain point is why i need to empty the dust bag and this need point and this uh, pain point can lead to what about vacuum cleaner without dust bag 
or what about vacuum cleaner without uh, the need to clean it up auto cleaning vacuum cleaner hmm? they exist but at a certain point in time it didn't so observing the pain point will allow an improvement on the product on the system or the creation of a new product system hmm? and this is a narrow version you observe a uh, uh, a pain point on emptying a dust bag but the broader version of name or uh, a pain point could be why you need a vacuum cleaner to have the house cleared up mm. can we imagine way to clean up the house without a vacuum cleaner and there could be many ways to generate solutions from this pain point it could be i don't want to bring around the vacuum cleaner and that's robots that clean up the house it could be I don't want to plug uh, the vacuum cleaner, this is more sort of narrow, the vacuum cleaner into the wall and there is battery powered vacuum cleaner. Or I don't want the vacuum cleaner at all and you can imagine a solution when self-cleaning pavements, for instance. I don't know how, but they self-clean. Hmm? So that could be all solutions that stem from a pain point that is cleaning up in a, in a broader version, cleaning up the house is boring and nobody wants to do it and people complain and people are not happy, etc. And these are all indication of possible pain points that you can stem from and see if there is a solution. When we introduce gap needs, we say the needs are gap in a system and pain, pain points are a good way to observe gaps because pain points are things that in, in, together with workaround are things that highlight that there is a gap there is something that can be done differently uh, because it's creating pain in a, a way in a definition mm -hmm. so also analyzing the results of the interviews and the things you're going to do look for workaround pain points uh, things that doesn't work very very well etc because there could be opportunity for identifying gaps that are needs that will bring you to more creative and nicer solution. So here there is another definition of task, uh, more structured, according to Bainion. Uh, a task is a goal together with some ordered set of action that are the steps as before. And the steps should be ordered, of course, because you cannot clean up the room before turning on the vacuum cleaner the, the order is important hmm? like in your questions the order is important and here there are some properties of each of these three things so the goal is the state of the application domain that a work system wishes to achieve it could be the goal like a human goal or be the goal that I want to do with an application I'm logging to the portal da didattica to fulfill a goal and to fulfill that goal with the system, I'm doing to do some tasks. And the task has some steps that are ordered in which I need to do things in a certain order to achieve that goal. Mm -hmm. uh, and the goal can be specified uh, as we have seen a particular level of abstraction, wider goal, narrow goal, etc. The task is a structured set of activity required, used or believed to be necessary by an agent, it could be a human, it could be a machine, the user interface, the application could have some task, could enable people to do some task. Mm? Or a robot could have some task to do. Mm? To achieve the goal using a particular technology, and the task is broken down into more and more detailed level of description until it's defined in terms of actions, that were the, the things we called steps, the lower level steps, like getting the vacuum cleaner out and an action is a task that has no problem solving associated with it and which doesn't include any control structure so action steps are the simplest task you can have in a way mm? so logging in on the portal da didattica is a simple task because you cannot destructure more well you can destructure more is insert username and insert password and press login and then you can destruct more in type username and type password and click on login but at a certain point you cannot go 
any further in a way that is significant for the task and the goal you want to complete. And that is the action, the basic level, hmm? the basic step. Uh, so what you can learn analyzing tasks, thinking tasks in this way, in terms of steps, order and set of action, artifacts used, goal to be reached, etc. You, you, you can learn what your user goal can be, what they are trying to achieve. Hmm? Observing task, listening for task, extracting task. Uh, what user actually do to achieve this goal? I have this goal, I will do this task to reach this goal, and I'm using these things, like to clean up the house. I'm using the vacuum cleaner, I'm using the, this, I use the, the vacuum cleaner bag, I'm using stuff. Hmm? And, and what to do? They clean up the kitchen first or another room? And why? Hmm? That is more related to observation. Uh, but you extract tasks from the observation in a way. Uh, what experiences they bring to the task? Hmm? Well, with vacuum cleaner, maybe there is not much uh, personal, social, cultural experience per se. Uh, but if you imagine it inserted in the context of a goal, like cleaning up after the party, then there is personal, social, cultural things that happened before the task and maybe will happen during the task because maybe there is not one person cleaning up. Maybe it's the person that stay after the party that didn't run away quick enough to clean up the house. Hmm? Uh, how users are influenced by the physical environment? Hmm? Maybe I can do some task in a certain way in one environment and different environment will me need me a different approach to the task example same example i provide to you two weeks ago was if i need to complete a task with my smartphone in a sunny day outside will be different for completing the same task with the same device in the same place but while it's raining because i will have different artifacts i will have an umbrella or i will have to to see cover not to get wet, etc., instead of a bright sunny day. Hmm? So this is influence the task and the action and the pain points and the things that will happen during the task. And how user previous knowledge and experience influence how they think about the work, the workflow, the perform, and the pain points again that experience. All things that are important for you. Again, clean up the house. One thing is a person that never clean up the house, a room, and one thing is a professional cleaner. They will have different strategies, different workflow. They will use more or less the same artifacts, but they will use it in a different way. Mm -hmm. Same task, clean up, maybe same artifacts, but different action according to the experience, for instance. That is the previous knowledge and experience that they brought in. Mm -hmm. So it could be helpful when uh, focusing on uh, um, on tasks, uh, analyzing the interviews, the observation, the things you did, to frame it in a way as which was the goal of the person in this moment, which was the task that they were accomplishing while visiting the museum, while visiting the city, while learning a new language, while doing stuff, hmm? which was their goal in that moment which were their tasks, their activities, their pain points, the things that didn't work well, and that they say or they show us this thing. That could be valuable source of information to structure in this way, even quickly, even in your mind or in a piece of paper, to help you move on and drive user needs and go farther with that process. Hmm? Um, So what helps task analysis in? Identify the task your future application, your future solution must support. Uh, refining or redefining, the, if it's, um, this will be more clear when we are going to do usability testing, where you will have task, and you will have tasks that people will need to do with your application. And so in that case, you will be able, given that they are tasked with the system, you'll be able to uh, use tasks to understand if they are working, if there is something to refine, if there is something to change within the application. But still, tasks will be part of a goal 
and related to a set of ordered actions that you need to perform in a certain way. Hmm? So task will uh, also allow you to develop any content strategy, app structure, will be are helpful in the way I told you for the initial stages prototyping to get a more clarity about the user needs. This is a tool you can use um, to realize part of assignment one and also to perform usability testing that we will see at the end of the course as a way to validate your prototype with your immediate user. Hmm? That will be the same immediate user you, the same category of immediate user you are getting now. Hmm? Um, uh, of course, there are challenges and things that doesn't work well in task analysis. So for instance, task analysis is very easy when you have a, a well-defined workflow, hmm? like planning a trip or booking an exam on an existing system or tasks to do an activity in a specific time frame. You know what you have to do. The set of steps is, um, is good, is well done. Is, uh, or for repeated activities like scheduling. Mm -hmm. So something that you have habits involved, the workflows in, involves. Uh, it's a little bit more difficult when you don't have a, a workflow or anybody can do the activity whatever they want. Mm -hmm. In that case, it's a little bit more difficult because you it's difficult to get together um, common things. The challenges that we have with task analysis, and that's why it's a tool to be used, but it's not the outcome, like the need in our case, the outcome of assignment one, uh, one outcome of assignment one, not a task. Uh, the challenge is that we do not design task, but we are going to design interfaces, and there is not always a map one-to-one -one between task and object or task or graphical elements or task user interface maybe a task will uh, adopt multiple uh, steps to be completed in a user interface multiple pages uh, a web application has multiple tasks implements multiple tasks in parallel you can do multiple things things that again at the portal of the didactica you can accomplish multiple tasks how well it's another story, but you can accomplish multiple tasks. Mm? You can do multiple things. And people can use the same interface and application to achieve different results or do things differently one from another. And this again, pain points, workaround, etc. that could be useful. Mm? So tasks are important. We will ask you for three tasks in assignment two, one simple, one moderate, and one complex for your identified solution. And you will build your application starting from those tasks. And we will find again tasks in usability testing, as we we're saying. So it's important to have a clear definition of a task, the relationship with goal, and the relationship with steps and artifacts in designing your first level of prototyping, etc. Uh, keeping in mind that, of course, task doesn't match one one with one single feature of an application, maybe a task needs multiple feature of an application to be uh, completed. Mm? Maybe you observe a task that could be um, mapped to one specific action in the end, but people make it more complex than they could be for whatever reason, given to their experience, background, etc. Mm? So again, task could be something you can observe and could be available tool for uh, helping you analyzing the results of the need finding and will be also something you're going to define for your solution and for your application, a different level of um, abstraction in a way. Uh, and then there are actual techniques for task analysis that we are not going to see them. They are like formally techniques. One is task decomp decomposition and the basic idea of task decomposition is getting a task and splitting into subtask as much as possible. So clean the, the, uh, the rooms will be split in clean the kitchen and then clean the kitchen will be split in something else and then clean the, the left part of the kitchen and then clean the left part of the kitchen will be clean the counter close to the coffee machine and then will be split in subtask mm, to have a full decomposition of every single task which will include move from one room to another etc 
for the entire task and their ordering. And then there are other, including ethnography, including observation to derive tasks from the actions that people do. And so uh, deriving goals, derive action, derive steps, uh, and tasks from what people observe. Hmm? So these are all techniques for task analysis. We already have talked about observation in which, again, task analysis could be a way to um, derive results from, from that. And that's all about task. Any questions so far? That's a task for you. Any questions so far? OK. So this was analyzing. An idea of how you can analyze the thing that you are discovering in need finding. Uh, the, again, if we talk about assignment one, assignment one then will have um, some process like brainstorming, voting, etc., to uh, move from five user needs to one user need and one solution in the end. Mm? So to narrow down, also in this case, the, the things you have to do. That was about analyzing. Now let's talk about synthesizing, that is making the results of your analysis usable, uh, ready to be consumed by other people that are not you. Mm -hmm. And there are many ways to do this uh, synthesis. Um, uh, personas, I mentioned at the beginning of the course, is one way. We're not going to cover it, and we are not going to ask it for you. Um, user stories that also are common in software engineering are another way to present results. Did you do user story in any software engineer course? Yes. yes. User story is another way to present, hmm, to synthesize. We're not going to do user stories here. We're not asking user story, but that's a valid way that could happen, and it overlaps uh, with the things we are going to, to do. We are going to do something a little bit more different, um, because also to, to leave from writing, 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 that is more similar to user stories, in which you need to write text. Uh, and we're going to do it uh, graphically. So we're going to do storyboards. And to do storyboards, we need to do sketches. So what is a sketch? What is a sketch? It's written here. What is a sketch? Draw, not the application. Because we, we don't have an application. It could be a sketch of an application. We don't have yet an application. Um, so we want to synthesize the results of the net finding or the solution. So the sketch will be a drawing of an application or something that happened. Hmm? So uh, it could be a sketch, a single one piece of picture, not, not a story, just one thing. It could be a single user interface screen that would be a sketch user interface, a drawing of a part of a system, and that would be a sketch of uh, a part of a system the shape of an object in which in, uh, interact. Um, and what is a sketch? The sketch gives a static view of a possible interaction with a solution. Hmm? Uh, helps the person without reading, without immediately to get the setting for the interaction context. And it's often part of a longer representation like a storyboard. Hmm? So sketch one single sketch in the vacuum rarely exists. Mm. So what you can learn from these sketches that are here? These are two sketches. Well, three sketches. The first two in the top are together, and the last one is separate from the previous two. So let's say what you can learn from this one, for this couple of sketches here. Just looking at them. It's touch-based, I don't know if it's a tablet or not from that, but yes, it's touch-based. So you don't need a mouse, a keyboard, etc., to use it. And, and if you can read, it says also movies, articles, uh, concerts, plays, other, and the second screen is about a movie. Mm -hmm. So it would be, the domain, the context would be 
movies, article, plays. Could be sport as a domain. Movies, sport. Yes, no. Say it, not just move your ad. ad. No, could not be sport. So the domain, movies, plays, could be. We cannot see it, right? It's say article, movies, concerts, plays. The domain of this thing is sport, no. Is education, no. What is the domain of this? Entertainment. Hmm? And you can get it. Nobody's telling you that it's entertainment. Now it's just something you can watch these two uh, sketches and you are this information you got it in this in this one here what's the thing you can understand from this could be a reader but how do you what is the interaction expected in this context here No, no, what, what's useful for, we don't know, it's not written. Yeah, you have a smartphone and you need to go closer to this other object to do something, but we don't know because it's, we don't have enough detail. Hmm? But this is plain the interaction. That object needs to be interacted by, with a smartphone and you need to be in close proximity with the smartphone to make it happen, whatever it needs to make happen. Again, one picture tells you these things without any textual explanation. Then sketches are never, almost never alone. They are part of a longer story so that you get more what happens before, what happened next. So sketches uh, are a way, as I was saying, to, um, to, to be used in storyboards. And storyboards are a format of scenario. So scenario are stories for design and are rich stories of interaction. So they are description of how the user engaged an interactive system to solve a specific task or more task. Hmm? Notice that our description of how user, description of how people do something, not how interactive system react. So scenarios are descriptions similarly to user stories for or what the user do with an application. Hmm? Uh, and there could be various format, the written summary, like use case, uh, user stories in a way. Uh, there could be flowchart, transition diagram, but it could also be the graphical sketches that are storyboards. So storyboards are scenarios about how people use things. And you can have different level of details in scenarios. You can have stories like from need findings uh, that are used for understanding what people do. Actual stories like, oh, the person did that and then did this other thing, etc. Could be conceptual scenario or abstract scenario that are useful for generating ideas and specifying requirement. And they stem from the stories, but they stem from the task of the stories. In a conceptual scenario, there is no reference to technology and they may lead to different concrete scenarios. So from one conceptual scenario, you can come up with three different concrete scenarios. And concrete scenarios are instead used to evaluate and vision ideas and evaluation. And they are, of course, one possible solution of a conceptual scenario. Could be many and show how technology are used in the user context. Again, the focus is always, always on the user context. And the key design features are included in the concrete scenario. Uh, and then there is a use case that is used for specification, implementation, and you probably have seen it in software engineering. Um, so we are not going to, to talk about them. Uh, storyboard. Storyboard are a way to represent either a concrete or conceptual scenario. We're going to speak a little bit more on the conceptual part, partially on the conceptual part, something in the middle, let's say low, low concreteness, uh, in which you are not going to see the key features 
of the application implement in a specific way but still you get some concrete decision on what the application should do and how it should behave and look like hmm? so storyboard are like comic books hmm? so series of sketch uh, so the definition of storyboard is a graphical depiction of an outward ap appearance of the intended system without any system functionality they are end drawn by definition that feature the execution of a task or a multiple task like a concrete scenario uh, this they are made with a few panel a few sequence of sketches and convey what a person may accomplish using an interactive technology but of course the focus is on people so people should be always included in a sketch uh, storyboard communicate the flow showing what happens a specific point in time specific key point in time of the story hmm? so some uh, moments can be, can be skipped from one uh, sketch to another there is no need to have artistic skills that's why we are also doing it here so we don't have any requirements about artistic skills it's not about nice pictures it's just about communicating your ideas communicating the ideas the solution you are coming up in your specific domain in your specific topic for instance at the end of assignment one what to find in a storyboard in a storyboard you illustrate the goal for a task and you illustrate how a task unfold for every significant step of the task and at the end you show in the storyboard how the people involved in the task accomplish their goal and typically they are satisfied they are happy at the end mm -hmm. and storyboards are all about task and all about people mm -hmm. so people using a specific system in time in a context to do something that, and that something is a task and you see the outcome of the task so this is an example uh quickly what do you think this what happens in this storyboard Uh, yes so sketch one there is the person that say uh, what a busy day i better go home now and what what you see well yes you see that this person is at work mm? and you also see that he is um it depends how you read it could be six let's say this is six right and then what happened next So it's magically in the uh, metro. Mm. Significant step. What happens in the metro? There is no mobile signal. And why the, there is a problem that is no mobile signal? Because this person should have checked what to cook. Mm. So needs to go home. And, and here what happens? It's in the subway there is a phone at the end and there is a user interface that you don't see the detail and it's fine and the person say oh my dinner tonight up suggest curried chicken which is only 222 calories so there was a context busy day late there was a problem i don't have on my signal and to go home and there is where your sol the solution imagine this is your solution your solution helps your solution helps suggesting that for this person for whatever criteria uh tonight this person should have chicken only that is only 222 calories so probably calories is something that is fundamental for this person and then what happens where is this person next sketch as a supermarket and is using the app that you again don't see you don't see exactly what's going on in the app you see that he's using the app because storyboards again all about tasks all about people you see the people that using the app at the grocery store say okay it's say i need chicken apples so the application which feature the application has showing, showing ingredients probably has the recipe on them and then 
at home with all the ingredients on the table and say instructions sounds like i can do that so yes there is a recipe and it's sort of a simple recipe because this person say sounds like i can do that and then in the end satisfaction the um, person is happy yum eating is whatever it was the the curry chicken uh, for dinner so this is a storyboard that illustrate how the app that already downloaded the data received to the user's smartphone so they could look it look 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 it up without mobile connection and check the shopping list before shopping for ingredient and making an ultimate meal but it gives you information like the time the context where the person where where the problem where etc uh, another example and then I stop with examples yes series of sketch what's going on here so let's say what's the context what's the problem and it's still about food but what's the context what's the problem that are the most interesting things here what's the context it's late, it's late. and this person doesn't have do any shopping and everything is closed so that's the pro the context is also the problem um, which is the second level problem that this person got in and say okay no food at home i will get a pizza a pizza but the delivery is 45 minutes so too long it's already late i don't want to wait other 45 minutes for get a pizza open the fridge oh i still got some veggies and feta and i don't know what to make and what to make is the solution here the application that again you don't see what's going on in the application the application that suggests that quinoa salad with feta and veggie is only 15 minutes so less than waiting for for the pizza and it's easy to do and it's only 350 calories and then you see that half an hour later with respect to when this person come in in the home this person is happy again and is eating so all this terrible finish with people eating but it's not um, mandatory of course hmm? so you see the structure of the storyboard there is a context specified there is a problem that happens because of the context and then there is a solution that in your case will be your solution that will help save the day or save that specific problem and will illustrate the key features like timing calories easy to use these are the three key features of this example application and then in the end there is always the positive end of the story hmm? uh, in six nine steps and hmm? uh, here there is a description uh, so what storyboard should convey a storyboard should come yes yes um, the storyboard reports only the key moments so you're right of course here the person should have inserted in some way which are the things that the person has on the fridge and the app suggested the quinoa mm -hmm. but that is not a key feature of the solution the key feature of the solution is to provide uh, the best meal in the quickest time easy to use with low calories and then of course you need to, to tell the application what you have available or you can look for the recipes and see okay this recipe is i can do it uh, of course but it's about the key moments the storyboard so that is something that is not represented but of course happened in a certain point some data entry for which you insert the information okay but since it's not a key moment under the task perspective and the person perspective is like trivial yes inserting information that could be skipped in a storyboard but of course the application would support it so what storyboard should convey and you can see it from the example uh, the people the environment and the task the sequence hmm? so what steps are involved not the detailed the user interface of the application you'd never see the user the user interface you see that there is using something but you don't see what's going on on something 
uh, you see the role the deplication the interface plays in helping the person achieving the goal through the task uh, the trigger for the task so the problem what we call the problem and of course which task is illustrated in this case was the task about cooking in both cases was a task about were task about cooking and of course in the end the satisfaction satisfaction it could be the motivation for the people like eating low calories quick eating healthy eating the motivation and the end results and if the end result is satisfying and how much is satisfying and typically is always very satisfying in a storyboard okay so these are the things that the storyboard should convey and they were also in the other two examples uh, so storyboards are not dynamic storyboards are statics because they are pictures so how do you handle dynamicity in storyboard you can have a different way to do that the the easiest one is using the same convention of comic books so you have people you have speech bubbles you have background information you have things like in a comic strip and you can also have notes attached to each scene explaining what is happening uh, but notes should be brief because otherwise you are writing a lot of, of text and you are removing the need of it, the, the, the value of having a storyboard because you are writing what's going on mm -hmm. so comic book convention is the traditional storyboarding technique that we are going to use uh, then we have score storyboard then it happens um, um, when there is something really dynamic like multimedia stuff etc in which the person the creator could add a specific annotation focusing on movements color sounds when color sounds as, as such things are really important for the storyboards it cannot really be conveyed by black and white so you make a note to say okay here the person here a strong noise hmm? a loud noise um, and then you can also have text-only storyboards that are more similar to stories in a way that describe interaction when it's too complex to describe in an illustration mm -hmm. but most of the time storyboards are traditional one using comic book comic strips convention so bubbles like here right um, so text people saying things and there is a clock here that is of course not in the in the sky but is just to give the context etc and there's background because there is a house before there was a work setting the subway the fridge elements of the environments that are involved with the story and with the um the task at end why storyboards are end drawn because end drawn is quick and this is all about being quick and communicate ideas so there is no need to spend time on graphical tools and focus on too many details because by end drawing you cannot really do many details um, and it's fine for a storyboard and also you are able to experiment with different scenarios so you do a storyboard in one direction then you say no this is wrong you just delete it and redo it and it's probably one minute mm? uh, end drawing is imprecise and it's fine uh, because user when things are imprecise um, feel free to express more comments more idea more suggestion than when they see something polished the final version and this is also true for prototyping the paper prototype will be done and made because they are imprecise and people are more focused on giving suggestion instead of picking oh i don't like the color or this should be three pixels on the left that is something that happens in later stage so end drawing can give you feedback about generic structure layout the flow of information the structuring of information the passage from one page to another which are main things and then you can focus on colors smaller detail in a later stage mm? so here same and drawing because there is no distraction more focus on getting ideas and communicating ideas quickly and effectively uh, here there is example of how to draw people if you need to sketch people um, the star people is the easiest one you do a star basically but instead of the top angle you do the circle the circle that is the the head hmm? use your imagination just should be um, some kind of 
people, understanding other people. And the star people is also easy because it can be moved quickly, just move a, a, a part of the star accordingly. Um, so the benefit of storyboard are this one. They emphasize how a system can accomplish a task without losing details on how the interface is done. Focus the conversation and the feedback on the task and communicate in a better way the solution. Uh, get everyone on the same page about the application goal and task, the main goal, the main task. If it's a storyboard to be shared with a developer team, for instance, that didn't do the need finding, that didn't do the things before, and especially avoid nitpicking about the user interface details like the button, the text on the button, or the size, or the position, all these things that are instead related to um, paper prototyping or prototyping phase and design phase that we will see next week. So this is all about storyboard and analyzing and synthesizing. So keep in mind, task, a little bit of analysis of task, tasks are related to goal and action and steps in a specific context, and storyboard are description, graphical description of task with people involved and almost no user interface shown, but the device and interaction, yes. With that, I will stay still here for five minutes if you have any question. Uh, otherwise, we will meet tomorrow in the three uh, usual lab where you can continue to work on assignment number one. Have a nice rest of the day.